After taking a look at Jesus turn water into wine and what that symbolizes and what Jesus can do in our life, the power and the authority that he has in the world, we take a look at again, another miracle of Jesus in our Sunday school lesson this week, where Jesus, his power and his authority, it is once again shown to us and it is shown to us over the spiritual and what the Lord can do for us in our spiritual life. Our Sunday school lesson today, there in the ninth chapter of Mark's gospel and the 14th verse, it opens up with Jesus. He's coming to his disciples and they were surrounded, we'll see, by a great multitude that were disputing with them, including the scribes. Now Jesus, he was coming to a group of disciples that he had left behind when he took Peter, James, and John up into the mountain where he had transfigured himself. And so after he had transfigured himself and he was coming back down from the mountain, we'll see again that the disciples that they were standing there and they were having a dispute with the scribes. And so the question becomes, well, what is it that they were having a dispute about? We'll see there in the 17th verse that a man from the crowd, he responded to Jesus and he said to Jesus, teacher, I brought you my son who has a mute, who has a possessed spirit. The demon that possessed the man's son, we're told there in the 18th verse, would take control of him, would make him foam at the mouth. And so since Jesus was away up in the mountain with Peter, James, and John, the man says that, that he spoke to his disciples. He spoke to Jesus' disciples, believing that the disciples should have been able to cast out the demon. So question is, do you think that the disciples should have been able to cast out the demon from this son? That's a very interesting thought that we have here. Now, if we take a look at scripture from the 10th chapter of Matthew's gospel and the first verse, that scripture shows us that when Jesus first sent out the 12, that he gave them power, he gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and disease. So the disciples, they certainly should have been able to help this father out. They certainly should have been able to cast out the demon from, from his son, but they were unable to do so. Why were they unable to do so? That's a very important question that we'll have answered by the end of our lesson today. And so because they were unable to do so, the scribes, that is the religious leaders, who were always antagonizing Jesus wherever it was that he seemingly went, we can see why it was that they were disputing here. It was likely that the scribes, the religious leaders here, that they were chastising the disciples for, for trying to be able to do something that in their minds, the scribes, the religious leaders' minds, that the disciples had no power and no authority to be able to do whatsoever. And so Jesus, he comes along the way here and we'll see there in the scripture, after the man had told Jesus what had happened, that the disciples were unable to help him, we'll see there in the 19th verse that Jesus, he remarked, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? So who was that remark directed to? Imagine many of us will say, well, it was directed to the disciples because the disciples weren't able to help, help this father and his son. But I believe that it was not only directed to the disciples, I believe that it was directed to all of the people, the scribes included. Jesus, once again, we see here in scripture, was calling on faith, believe, have faith, trust in the Lord. That is something that you and I, that we must be reminded of on a daily basis. Have faith, believe, trust in God. There in the 19th verse, we'll see again, Jesus, he said, after making that statement, he said, bring him to me, bring the child, bring him to me. Now, something that I hope that you have noticed throughout this quarter of lessons is that anytime someone came to Jesus in desperation or just needing his help, nowhere do we see in scripture that Jesus turned away anyone that came to him. Jesus, he was always going to help. Here we are again in our lesson today where a father is desperate for his son and Jesus doesn't turn this man away. Yes, he remarked, oh, faithless generation, but Jesus, he is on top of it. This is how the Lord is when we come to him. When we come to God in faith, he doesn't turn us away. The Lord, he helps us. 
Now, when we take a look at the 20th verse, we'll see that the people that they brought the boy to Jesus and he began to immediately convulse, the boy did. He fell to the ground and he began to foam at the mouth. This demon, I would say that this demon knew that Jesus was nearby and this demon, he was putting up a fight. This is something that reminds me of what we can see in the fifth chapter of Mars gospel where Jesus, he was with a man who had many demons who they called themselves legion. If you take a look at the fifth chapter of Mars gospel and you take a look at the seventh verse, you'll see that legion recognized Jesus and he even asked him, what have I to do with you, Jesus, son of the most high God? We'll see there in that scripture that legion then begged Jesus. He begged Jesus not to torment him. Legion in the 12th verse there in the fifth chapter of Mark's gospel, he then begged Jesus to send them to the swine that was nearby. And we'll see there in that scripture that Jesus, he permitted it. So if Legion recognized who Jesus was, if Legion recognized Jesus's power and authority, you better believe that the demon here in our Sunday school lesson this week, you better believe that he recognized exactly who Jesus was. He recognized Jesus's power. He recognized Jesus's authority as well. And so in the 21st verse, Jesus, he spoke to the dad and he asked him, well, how long has this been happening? I imagine that Jesus, he already knew this, but he asked the dad the question. And so the dad, he answered him from childhood. He said there in the 22nd verse that the demon had thrown the boy into fire. The demon had thrown the boy into water. The demon, in other words, was trying to kill this man's son. And so this was a very nasty demon, wasn't it? The dad then said to Jesus there, if you can do anything, he said, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus, he responded to him. He said to him, he said to him in a manner of speaking, it's not about if I can do it, but if you can believe. This is a very important statement that Jesus has made here for all of us today as well, because many of us, we are wrestling demons. I don't know what your demon is, but many of us, we're wrestling demons. Well, there's demon, the demon of anxiety, the demon of stress, the demon of sexual immorality, the demon of addiction. All of us, we are fighting demons, but how many of us are overcoming the demons that we are fighting? Many of us, we don't turn to the Lord with what it is that we're going through. Like I said, many of us, we're fighting demons. Some are fighting despair. Some are fighting depression. But we don't ever turn to, to Christ. We don't turn to the Lord. We end up trying to wrestle these demons on our own or, or by some worldly means. And the demon, those demons, they just throw us to the ground. They have their way with us. I say to you today, I encourage, I implore all of you today, turn to the one who can help you. Again, Jesus, he has power and authority over all things. And I want you to understand today that he has power and authority, especially over the demon as well. Those demons, we should put them into his hands and allow the Lord, allow Christ to have his way with those demons. And so there in the 24th verse, we'll see that the father of the boy, he cried out after Jesus had made that statement. He said, Lord, I believe. And then he said, help my unbelief. And what a prayer that is. Help my unbelief. That is something that all of us, we should be praying to God on a daily basis. You see, we should be praying, especially when we recognize that we're struggling in our faith. Pray to God, help my unbelief. There's nothing wrong with, with that prayer. And so we'll see in the 25th verse that after the man had made this confession of faith, that Jesus, he rebuked the unclean spirit saying, deaf and dumb spirit, I command you come out of him, come out of the boy and enter no more. And there the demon, he cried out. He convulsed the boy greatly once again, and then he left them. And the scripture tells us that the boy became as one dead, and the people believed him to be dead. I do think that this boy, after the demon, after the demon left him, I do believe that the demon tried to kill the boy, and I do believe that the demon was actually successful temporarily. 
because we'll see there that Jesus then took the boy by the hand and lifted him and the boy arose back to life. And so after the day's events, the disciples will see there in the 28th verse that they came to Jesus in private and they asked him, why could we not cast out the demon? To which Jesus, he responded, this kind can come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. That talks about commitment. That talks about dedication. I did a Bible study quite some time ago now where I spoke about how there are levels to faith that I don't think many of us really understand, but there are levels to faith. Some of us, we have little faith. Some of us, we have faith that is growing. Some of us have faith that is again maturing. And some of us, we are strong of faith. Our goal, the believer's goal, should, should be to not have a faith that becomes stagnant, a faith that becomes complacent, your faith, it must always continue to grow. Even when you think that you are strong in faith, your faith, it should always be continuing to grow. Because once again, we go through some things in life. As Paul said, we may think that we wrestle against flesh and blood. We may think that flesh and blood is our enemy. But I want you to understand today that your enemy is not flesh and blood. We wrestle against what we cannot see and we wrestle against it on a daily basis. And what we cannot see often worries us. What we cannot see, it often stresses us. It causes anxiety. It causes great stress and depression. And in order for us to overcome what we cannot see, in order for us to overcome our demons, we must be strong of faith. Again, we must be committed to God. We must be dedicated to the Lord. We must be dedicated to our walk in faith. And again, we must be prayerful. Do you believe in the power of prayer? Do you believe in what God can do for you? You must pray without doubting. You must have faith without doubting. And when you do these things, I'm telling you today that you can overcome. That is what Jesus has promised to us. Yes, we may have our trials and we may have our tribulations, but Jesus, he has said, we can overcome because he has overcome all things. So do you believe? That has been an overarching question that we have had throughout our Sunday school lessons this spring quarter. Do you believe? You must believe, you must have faith. And again, I encourage, I implore all of you, have faith in the Lord, have faith in Christ. He has power and authority over the world. He has power and authority over the spiritual as well. And we must trust, we must believe in him. And when we do this, I'm telling you today that we will, we will always overcome. Thanks for watching this week's Sunday School lesson. As always, I hope that you enjoyed this lesson. I hope that you will take something away from this lesson, that you will apply it to yourself and that you will share it with someone somewhere. And I hope that you'll come back for our Sunday School lesson next week. Make sure that you're following this channel so that you can get the next notification for next week's Sunday School lesson so that you don't miss it, so that you don't miss the Sunday School lesson, the sermons, the Bible studies, or the Food for Thoughts. Make sure that you're following this channel today.